In this video story today, we'll be talking about embryology or development of the primitive gods. Okay, and I would like you guys to um, lend me your attention as I take you through the beautiful story of development of the primitive gods. Okay, so you see, this is the primitive gods, and you see that uh, the primitive gods is basically forming from the yolk sac and the endoderm and all those beautiful story. Okay, so I feel like uh, let's let's discuss it so development of the primitive guts actually starts as a result of cephalocaudal and lateral folding of the embryo you know the embryo is folding from the head down to the caudal part okay so that's what we call cephalocaudal folding of the embryo okay so it is formed okay okay from the dosal portion of the endoderm, okay, the, from the dosal portion of the endoderm, the lined yolk sac cavity that is incorporated into the embryo, okay, like part of the primitive gut is actually formed from the dosal part, portion of the endoderm, okay, which is basically the lined uh, yolk sac cavity that is incorporated into the embryo, okay. This is a yolk sac that we have been talking about, all right? Now, a portion of the yolk sac and the atlantoids remain outside the embryo. See, this is the yolk sac and the atlantoids, and these are basically outside the embryo because this embryo, the, em the main embryo is mainly this blue stuff you see there, okay? So, endoderm of the primitive gut gives rise to the epithelial lining of the digestive tract and the biliary passage later on in life. The parenchyma of the glands, such as the liver, the pancreas, and the muscles, and connected tissues and peritoneal components, and other layers of the walls of the gut are derived from the splanchnic or the visceral layer of the lateral plate mesoderm. Okay, so this is, uh, will I see the lateral plate mesoderm here? not here but it contributes a lot to so many structures that are listed here okay so now epithelium at the cranial and the caudal extremities of the tract that's like epithelium at the well i say the frontal okay and the caudal the caudal means like uh, the one that is like at the down parts okay so epithelium at the cranial and the caudal extremities of the digestive tract or the primitive tract is derived from the ectoderm of the uh, stoma stomatodium, okay? That's the primordial mouth, okay? And also the protodium, which is actually the anal pit, respectively. So that means that the epithelium of the cranial parts of the gut is developed from, is derived from the stoma stomatodium, which is actually the primordial mouth. And the one at the caudal extremities is from what? The protodium, which is the anal pit. Okay, so part of the primitive gut is in free communication with the yolk sac, and this part of the primitive gut that is in free communication with the yolk sac is the mid gut. All right, mid gut is in free communication with the yolk sac. All right, so this is the mid gut, and you can see that there's a free communication between the mid gut and the yolk sac as the embryo is developing. So parts of the cranial, uh, the parts cranial and caudal to this are the foregut and the hindgut respectively. All right. So if this is the midgut, right, the parts cranial, that's the part that is more to the head side, is the foregut. Uh, the caudal one, that's the part that is is more closely to the caudal part or the end side, is what we call the hindgut. So cranially. The foregut is separated from the stomatodium by the buccopharyngeal membrane. Okay, buccopharyngeal membrane uh, separates the foregut from the buccopharyngeal. Okay, sorry, buccopharyngeal membrane so, uh, separates the foregut from the stomatodium. Okay, so caudally, the hindgut is separated from the proctodium by the clocal membrane. Okay, so later on, these membranes will disappear because at the cranial pass there is a need for the membrane to disappear so that the mouth will become open, okay? And the caudal part, 
there's a need for the clock out membrane to disappear so that the anus will become open so that the rectum is connected to the outside. Failure of all these things to disappear will cause various anomalies. Okay, so later on, these membranes disappear and the gut opens to the exterior at its two ends. Do you understand? This is the opening of the gut at the cranial side. Your anus is the opening of the gut at the caudal side. All right. So, guys, this is the beautiful story of the development of the primitive gut. Okay, not really digestive system in particular, because when we're talking about digestive system in particular, we'll be talking about derivatives of the foregut, derivatives of the mid gut, derivatives of the hind gut. Okay, but this one we're talking about the primitive gut before we move on to discuss di uh, the development of the digestive system in proper. All right, so see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye for now.